Well, there was no crew, really. Um, I did... Uh, I had Jenny Buckland and her assistant Becky, they they did the makeup which they did a great job on because every five minutes we were having to stop to have new prosthetics done because they just destroy each other, Helen and Rami, and there was me directing and producing and who, and who wrote it and apart from that I had my right hand man Kamel Yildirim who DP'd it and obviously assisted me with the sound because he was having to film while recording sound and do all the lighting and cinematography and Basically, I threw him at the deep end, and apart from me and some makeup ice, he was the only crew member doing everything. So he did a really cool job as well because um, he got me some great lighting. He set the setup, which is what I asked him to do, hanging the plastic drapes to use in effect of his lighting and the way he was going to shoot it. Um, every time he cut up an idea of a shot, it was an idea I'd thought of as well. We were like thinking of the same shots and been planning it, and when we spoke about it, I knew he was the perfect person to work with because I've worked with him so many times and I have such a working relationship with him. But plus, when we sat down to plan the shots, we both had the same ideas. We love the same kind of cinema. We love the same cinematography techniques. We can both read each other's mind. And he gave me exactly what I wanted on camera. He's a good man. And obviously, Sharon helped me behind the scenes, doing some uh, camera operating and standing by me and supporting and generally assisting, doing some stills photography as well because um, there was no one else to do it so she just jumped in and helped what I told her to do and I can't forget my dad was great because he uh, did all the catering, he cooked everyone dinner and did a really good job and kept making tea. Every five minutes it was tea with my dad. And action! I loved you. I was crazy about you. The, 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 the interesting thing about this film this is all shot in one location, apart from the opening. And I, um, for two years, I'd made a film and for two years been working and working on stuff, but I was always thinking, what am I going to do next? There was a lot of anticipation after Tortured, which was one hell of a film and it caused quite a, a stir. Um, to follow on from that, I was thinking, what can I do? I didn't want to do the same thing and I didn't want to fall into the trap of just doing this kind of exploitation horror so I thought right I can't help myself I love gritty nasty films but I also like real intense drama and um, I honestly think I'm getting older I've matured a little bit of my age as in I when I was younger making films I'd make crazy slapstick dark humoured guts in your face films and I love all that but I think I want to take it to the next level as I'm getting older and get I wanted to focus a bit more on performance and more of a character relationship and and really getting behind the characters, really feeling something for them, even if it's mixed emotions. I wanted you to get into the characters' heads and then really get in in the, in the zone with them. And I kind of came up with an idea of a nice simple drama to film in one location and I was thinking of um, someone being captured and then having a relationship with their um, with, the, with the, the guy that's captured them and the relationship that they would build and how they try and get out of that situation. That was one idea I was playing with. I also found a location while working on a project with Kamel, an abandoned train line, and that inspired me to do something crazy because I've always loved kind of films where people are isolated, really spooky locations. And I was kind of coming up with a ghost-like kind of film that could be set at a train station, which I was going to call Station X. Well, in the end, because I was playing with both ideas, I combined them. So I have this opening at a train station, which I found locally to where we filmed the, the garage scene. And the, obviously it's not a ghostly film, but the, the whole opening scene is very ghostly and scary, intense and atmospheric of a, a, a mysterious character stalking this uh, helpless girl. So I built all that in, and then I go straight for the uh, garage scene, which is my dad's garage. Right. How Second day. Yeah. Second day of Tormented. Yesterday went really well. Got some amazing stuff. And today we're at the disused train station. Yeah, where the director. first part <laughs> oh, Where the first part of the film takes place. There's always problems on a shoot, always. I don't think there's ever been a film in the world that's gone problem free. Um, this there was no major problem, but to be honest. We were filming in a garage in November, late November. In fact, we're pushing towards December, so it's a very cold time of year. And it was that cold, it killed all my batteries. Both my batteries on my main camera run out. Even the behind the scenes camera batteries run out, both of them. Radio mics, I went through a series of AA batteries with them. Luckily, I had spares. But when the camera batteries went, I didn't, because I, they both of them went, and they were top big batteries. They're supposed to last all day. And I have done shoots for years with these batteries. They're top notch and they've lasted me for days on shoots. But these, these went within half a day. 
in the end, I was having to run the camera off the mains, which I felt really bad because I didn't want to sh restrict Kamel as the cinematographer uh, on the film. But we worked around it, managed to charge some up while we was doing the prosthetics and makeup and get enough li life to boost it for the last few shots. So we survived, but that could have been a major problem. I don't know. <laughs> My son's going to cameo, he's already becoming a film legend at three months old. <laughs> um, I planned one 12 hour day shoot to get the whole garage scene done with the next day, half a day to pick up the opening. To be honest, it took an hour and a half to set up. We arrived on time, everything was going on time. I think it took a bit longer to set up than I, I f anticipated, but this always happens on films. You can't help that really because we, I get, I, I always say I'm making a simple little film plan, a simple thing, but I don't really, because as I'm writing it, we've got blood and gore and loads of effects to consider, so there was a lot of makeup to do. Then I wanted to do all these drapes and make it look cool like he's gonna kill her, because there's plastic sheeting everywhere, so with Kamel was putting them up with Sharon, and um, so the setting up took longer because I basically get more excited and more ambitious than I'm on set, so, and I, um, once we got going, I thought it was good. Um, Everything did go well. It was me, basically. I gave about a 17-page scene to the actor and actress to do in 12 hours, which is asking a lot, because poor Camel's on his own having to do all the setups, because we're reversing to one side of the garage to the other. We're doing numerous takes to get different angles, then the close, gritty shots, and get a lot of coverage to make it snappy. Um, Camel's doing some really tricky cinematography as well, and the actors, I'm getting them to do four pages in one go doing long takes to get that pure raw emotion so I'm asking a lot of everyone it was going really well but I was thinking I was being ambitious and I was getting a bit worried that maybe I should have had two days which I would have ideally wanted but due to budget restraints and and obviously working with people's availability because it was low budget um, but we managed to finish within 13 hours so literally an hour over which is nothing really um, considering all the, all the setting up and then the packing down and the fact that they got all their lines, we got all the coverage, we managed to do numerous takes to get it right, we managed to get all the angles, everyone did a fantastic job in that and then the second day it went pretty good, the only thing I was worried about was the weather because of filming outside, it started to rain a bit, there's one shot where it started really peeing down but Again, we persevered and we wrapped early, to be honest. I thought we might not finish till three or four on the main chase down the tracks, but we did that within about five hours. Basically, oh, when you're lying there, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll cheat it, but you're going to see a glint of a blade. I mean, there's going to be like a little jigsaw hacksaw in the corner, which I've brought. It's a nasty little blade. Okay. So as he's coming down, you're going to start being rough, but more than the sex, you're actually going to start... <laughs> so you're shaking, right? It's because your body's shaking. Because you see it, it's your way out, so you're trying to grab it. I'm doing that whole life thing. Every time you go to grab it, it's like, and it moves you, and your hand just misses it. And eventually, when you get it, because he's so busy being a dick, you don't see that when she turns, when, when you do the spin round, you've got this blade, and it's going to like, you're, you're going to shock. Because when it cuts you, you don't, you don't realise it's kind of stomach. It yeah. is going to be the stomach. Okay. So when so you come out, it's like, but, I will know. say that um, it's been one of the most positive films I've made, because having done quite a lot of films and worked on a lot of stuff, um, although every film has its kind of little epics, this film ran smoothly, it ran to schedule pretty much, I got everything done, everyone was happy about it, and I feel positive after it, uh, I had great fun doing it, I, I, it seemed like everyone had great fun, so I would say this is a very positive experience, and um, it was really good to get back into the game doing a crazy film.